What does marketing leadership mean to you? Uh, another outstanding question. Um, it, it's a combination of things. I think being a leader is very different than being a manager. So let's talk about today's topic because marketing leadership is being tested every day in this COVID world. According to the 10-year study by ADP, of which is called the ADP Research Institute study, only 14% of the 26,000 people they surveyed are highly engaged at work. The pandemic didn't help matters, that's for sure. And when we say highly engaged, we mean approaching your job with vigor, dedication, and absorption. And right now, as you know, people don't leave companies, they leave their bosses. So what is it that Qualcomm is doing to create more engagement and adapt to some of the new rules of leadership that we're all living with? Our guest today, Don McGuire, is consciously and deliberately guiding higher engagement at Qualcomm by transforming marketing into a caring and engaged growth engine. And this aligns a lot with the mission you all know that I care about, which is helping marketing leaders make that leap from order taker to growth champion. Don McGuire is the chief marketing officer of Qualcomm in San Diego, California. And boy, last week, Qualcomm announced their third quarter earnings. They had strong revenue and revenue diversification to share with investors. And they now have some very effective growth strategies across the automotive, IoT, handset, and other industry segments. And no small feat, for sure. And marketing played a key role in that. Now, Don was just promoted to CMO on July 12th. So we are very pleased that he was able to make time for us on a day that Qualcomm is calling a mental health holiday. So he's in the office today doing something very special for us. Don, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much, Lisa. It's really great to be here. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, so we know you're in beautiful San Diego, and we certainly hope you'll be able to get outside today uh, shortly after today's live stream because we pulled you back in. Yes, absolutely. It's, a, it's never a dull day in San Diego, for sure. Right. No, we were talking offline about that earlier. We've got people from all over the world today, Don, Nigeria, Portland, Oregon, Florida, Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, Arkansas. Uh, I just could go on and on, but it's. I'm just thrilled that we have such a global audience because you certainly represent a global organization. Give us a sense right now just of your origin story, like how old were you when you were bitten by the technology innovation bug? A uh, great question. Uh, and I've been seeing people show up in the in the live stream. So welcome everybody from uh, around the globe. Uh, I've been in the technology space pretty much my entire career. And uh, it was really after I graduated from college, I really didn't know what I wanted to do like a lot of people. Um, so what I, I did, what a lot of people do, I got a backpack and I traveled around for about eight months. Um, around the world, just um, enjoying cultures and meeting new people uh, and just sort of got, you know, on a self sort of realization journey and had a great time. Uh, but at some point I had to come home and when I ran out of money and uh, and uh, get serious about uh, what I wanted to do from a career path and a life path perspective. So my father actually has been in technology and was in technology his entire career. And I got a little bit of that from him. Uh, through some nice suggestions on what I might want to do and what I might want to pursue. And I simply read an article about this gentleman named Craig McCaw, um, who was the founder of a company called McCaw Cellular Communications at the time. And he was on the cover of Forbes magazine. He had a snake around his neck 
and he just looked like a super cool dude. And I was like, wow, this guy seems really interesting. Um, maybe I should consider something in this area. And that's how I got started in technology and in wireless. Um, and then sort of my career path just took me in different ways um, throughout, you know, throughout this journey uh, to where I am today. That's pretty exciting, although there are no snakes involved, right? No snakes no. were harmed in <laughs> no. your career growth. But I do think you gravitated to chickens, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we have uh, six chickens. So, uh, and they are uh, producing a lot of eggs. Um, and it's, it's kind of fun to have, uh, to have, you know, chickens running around the backyard. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm sure it is. And um, I know for sure my homeowners association here would not be pleased if we tried that, <laughs> but I sure wouldn't mind it. So talk to us today, uh, taking a little more of a serious turn. Um, how would you best describe and define for our global audience today, what does marketing leadership mean to you? Uh, another outstanding question. Um, it, it's a combination of things. I think being a leader is very different than being a manager. And what I mean, there's a lot of uh, manager titles, right? There's a lot of people who call themselves managers, there's general managers and, and whatnot. But the word manager, I think, has undersold the role of leadership for a very long time. Managing something implies to me that you're just sort of going through the motions or you're just sort of getting through something. Leading is, is actually creating motion and, um, and creating inertia and either pushing or pulling something in a, in a certain direction. And so from a leadership perspective, for me, at least, it's really about creating that motion and bringing people uh, along with you, uh, uh, you know, on that journey, whether it's pulling them towards something or pushing them towards something. Um, and so and so for, for me, it's it's been about, you know, how do you bring people along, you know, with you uh, along a journey towards a vision or towards a certain result um, and, and in be, it being inclusive. Um, having strong communication, uh, both from a, um, a left to right perspective, as well as a top to bottom perspective. Um, and part of it has been a little bit of a multidimensional task. It's part psychologist and it's part coach and it's part cheerleader, right? And, it, and it's part, um, you know, constructive feedback giver. And it's really a multidimensional role. Um, and it's all about how you, how you really stand people up and, and help them be successful in their careers and lead, whether it's yourself or a team, in a direction towards a positive result. So that's kind of been my philosophy throughout my career. And, um, you know, I think it's worked pretty well, but, um, you know, we're always learning, we're always growing. And if we're not learning, you know, we're stagnating. So um, it's it's an exciting time for, for me, for Qualcomm, and along my leadership journey, um, wow, man, I'm, 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 I'm taking that next step and I'm pretty excited about it. Well, we're very happy for you. And, you know, you talked about and touched on mental health there and, you know, we are still feeling the vestiges of grief and frustration about this new Delta variant. It's kind of, you know, that rock mm -hmm. in our shoe. Um, so you take mental health and team health very seriously as a leader why don't you step us through um, why that's a, an important personal hue and cry for you? Sure. Um, I'll start off like with what we've kind of been through here at Qualcomm and I'll, and I'll get to the personal piece. But um, when we first went into the pandemic, it was all about how do we keep employees productive? And I think the focus was on productivity. And that's important. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, we still had goals to meet. Uh, we still had stakeholders to to impress. And as you said earlier in the in the broadcast, Lisa, in the introduction, you know, Qualcomm just produced another you know record quarter in, in earnings and business results, and that's fantastic. Business results are important. Um, but along with the productivity angle of what do we do in this pandemic and how do we keep our teams you know healthy and they're and, and productive it's really about engagement um so it's not just about productivity everybody can sit at home typing away on a computer and answering email or producing documents or whatever that might be and feel productive but are they feeling engaged uh and so it was really important for me and for the company was to drive engagement as well as productivity 
So for my team, uh, which I have a lot of different people from a different uh, you know parts of their career, a different age groups, different you know different generations, so to speak, and I was particularly concerned with my younger employees who tend to live alone uh, in small places, um, uh, whether it's a high rise uh, or or whatnot, and and can be fairly isolated, especially when we were in extreme lockdown conditions. And so my my concern was with their mental health and well being, um, with regards to feeling isolated. Um, and even though they might be feeling productive, there's this isolation and this in this lack of engagement that um, that starts to play with you mentally. And so putting things in place that drive engagement, positive engagement, even though you're physically not not able to, because when you're in the office together or when you're in an, a, an environment with other people, engagement is almost automatic. Right. You're making eye contact. You're, you're seeing people in the hallway or in, in, the, in the cafeteria or in the cafe or on campus, and you're engaging. Um, well, that makes it, it's a lot harder to do that when you're stuck at home, you know, either by yourself or maybe with yourself and your goldfish or whatever that might be. Um, engagement starts to fall off fairly quickly. And I was noticing that a lot of my employees, specifically who didn't have families around them or didn't have a, a social circle that they could isolate with, um, feeling, you know, out of touch. And, and so we put a lot of things in place. Uh, obviously, they had to be virtual, but we put a lot of things in place to drive that engagement. Um, we did mindfulness, you know, virtual mindfulness uh, talks with mindfulness experts. We did stretching um, with folks, with the folks from Stretch Lab. Um, we did wine tastings. We did all sorts of things where we brought people together. We created uh, video content uh, by using by getting people engaged in their environments and then stitching them all together and then playing them back to the team. A lot of team virtual team get-togethers, happy hours, um, just sort of chats, uh, lunch, you know, kind of lunch and learns, brown bags, all those types of things to drive a level of engagement that really had less to do with business results and productivity and more to do with people feeling connected, connected to their colleagues, right? I think that's one of our mic drop moments that we're having right now is really making that distinction between productivity and engagement. And I've been watching a lot of shows about being more productive by going back to the office. I mean, you know, this universal debate hasn't yeah. ended. Yes. <laughs> and it's very interesting that not a lot of people are talking about engagement. They're just talking about you're more productive if you're sitting in your desk and I can come over and, in, you know, and talk with you at your right. desk or in the coffee room. So you're, right. I really admire your distinction there. Um, how did you get a baseline of how engaged people were or were not? Well, we continue to do pulse surveys um, throughout the in the pandemic at a at a global uh, company wide level as well as at a departmental and team level, and so and those results have been turned around in real time and shared with leaders um, so that we could keep a kind of a beat on on how things were going. And we definitely saw ebbs and flows in morale, um, in work life balance uh, as the lines blurred because your physical environment has become the place for both. So you don't know how to detach yourself anymore um, when you were going to an office and you, then you were going home. That was a physical separation point where you could shift your mindset to, I'm no longer in the office, so I'm no longer in work mode. I'm going home to my house where my, my pets, my family, my spouse, my partner, my friends are, and I can detach. Um, that Those lines were blurring, causing, again, anxiety. Uh, as well as just um, overall, you know, this this overall feeling um, isolated. And so we, we were really paying attention to that. And as we saw numbers start to kind of dip, then we put what's called work well in place as a, as a company-wide initiative, which includes things like our mental health days, which today is one of those. Um, and we've added, you know, four to six just company mental health days to our calendar outside of, in addition to regular holidays, that are on the calendar for people just to take a pause, you know, don't do right. email, don't get on email, just enjoy yourself, take care of yourself, um, you know, go for a hike, you know, work out a lot, go for a swim, go to the beach, whatever that might be, just take care of yourself. And so that's been, I mean, that's been received overwhelmingly positive um, for sure. And, and people really feel like the company's um, 
and the company understands right what is going on with them and, and is proactive uh, about about That's dealing great. with it and about addressing it. Yeah, sure. So Absolutely. let's talk and shift for a minute, Don, to the ramifications of this on your customers, your partners, your OEMs. And the whole value chain that Qualcomm has activated, what's what ha, do you think has permanently changed in the world of marketing? It's something perhaps you may never do again because of the changing way that your audience wants to be treated. Uh, a couple things on that. Um, first, you know, you mentioned that. Um, the, 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 one of the challenges has been how do you how do you continue to be a growth engine, you know, under in in these circumstances that we've been in for the past you know almost two years now, um, and we, you know it's interesting we we actually embarked upon as a marketing organization two really significant programs that um, that you know people would have thought wow this is really on one of them this is really challenging to do. Um, during you know a pandemic situation, and the other program was in a, it was a direct result of the pandemic. Um, so one of the one of the uh, programs is the, the the Qualcomm Small Business Accelerator program that we launched. Um, it was an idea that my team came up with. We took it to our CEO, and we said, "Look, um, our customers um, are suffering." Um, small businesses specifically are suffering. These are people that could really benefit from our technology. They're having to transition their business models from primarily bricks and mortar or physical um, or low technology to an online digital first, mobile first type of business model. And um, they're not just set up to do it, but we have all this great technology. We power all these great devices um, uh, uh, that can really help them. So let's let's put together a small business accelerator program and let's ask small businesses around the country to tell us their stories about how they're struggling um, to, to convert their models to think differently and how we could help them. Um, right. What kind of technology help they, they might need uh, and how we could bring that that to the table. And we had a you know overwhelming uh, amount of companies send in video content or PowerPoint decks or um, or just you know white papers or or word documents you know telling us their story and 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 how they were struggling and what they needed to help them and then we down selected to uh, to thirty three businesses around the country from all over the country where we delivered wow. uh, we delivered um, in the amount of twenty five to fifty thousand dollars each business in technology and product help with our partners from Best Buy, from the Geek Squad and Best Buy for Business, Verizon, Microsoft, um, Logitech uh, and others, we delivered you know, a lot of devices and technology help to these businesses with devices powered by Snapdragon and powered by Qualcomm Technologies that could really help them transform their business models. And these were nonprofits, these were educational companies. Um, the one here in San Diego is a music program that was an after-school program that was a physical program where students came to learn how to play guitar and, 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 and get a music education that's pretty much had been cut you know, in the schools. Um, and uh, they didn't know what to do um, when the pandemic hit. So we, we outfitted them with the digital tools that they needed to continue to teach um, and, and, wow. and help students learn how to play music. So totally fulfilling and, and lots of great stories um, from manufacturing to, uh, to education. And so that was one program that was a, a direct result of the, the pandemic situation that we've been in and how my team together and said, how can we help um, with our technologies, with our products? Um, how can we help uh, keep these small businesses not only alive and, and, and surviving, but also thriving on the other side, um, right? Because right. now we've got the tools, Thank you so right? In the post-pandemic world, uh. we continue to grow and, and do things differently. So that's one program. And then another program that, you know, you would say, you could say, wow, you guys are crazy for trying to do this and stand this up during a pandemic, is um, one of the things that we've noticed, you know, with our Snapdragon brand is that we have a lot of, we have a lot of affinity for Snapdragon around the world. And so we decided we're going to turn that affinity into community. Um, and, and so building community during, a, during this, this time has been interesting. Um, but, but we launched our Snapdragon Insiders program uh, in April of this year. Uh, and we have over 2 million 
now insiders around the world, um, which has just been phenomenal growth. And we knew we had affinity, but, but we didn't know how people would attach themselves to community. And what we're finding is um, that the pandemic actually gave us some really interesting ways to engage um, with our fans. Um, and, and because everybody was sort of in this mode of, 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 of learning and connecting online, it really gave us sort of a way to, to actually launch community in a unique uh, environment that we were in and build uh, on that affinity and bring our fans together to collaborate to, and, and to sort of, you know, kind of commingle in an online space, um, which, which proved to be super successful. So again, another That's program great. where you would say under normal circumstances, you know, you could have done it differently, but we actually, we actually decided, let's just, let's just do it and let's turn infinity into community. Um, and so far, so good. Um, the key now is engagement, which, you know, we've been talking about through this entire session. How do we keep these people engaged with us and deliver value to them um, as uh, as a fan? So uh, another well, program we've stood up during this pandemic that's been pretty successful. I want to ask you some advice. Sure. Uh, one of the questions I get a lot from our CMOs is, I'm really good at marketing, but I want to be a growth champion. What's one of the first things a really good marketer can do to elevate into more of a growth champion role within their organizations, whether they're tiny, you know, whether they're a $10 million company or they're a multi-billion dollar company? That's a great question. I would say the number one thing you could do as a marketer is, and I'm going to explain this, so bear with me, is be in the business, not on the business. And I think um, what happens with marketing organizations is they tend to operate outside of the business as a separate functional organization um, that you know has maybe some ties or some connected tissue, but but sort of um, is sort of hovering ar you know around or outside of the business. My philosophy has always been that in order for marketing to be a growth engine and a driver of business results, you have to be in the business. You have to understand the business. You have to be able to communicate. You know, we're in technology, so we have to be able to speak engineer, understand engineer, right? Communicate with engineers. Um, and the, you know, marketing and engineering are in, in some ways, you know, right brain, left brain exercises, but in some ways it's Mars and Venus. Um, so if you're, but if you're in the business, right? If you're in the business and you've got a true understanding of what those business result drivers are, you can be better marketers. You can, and you can also show that you can build credibility with your business stakeholders um, and that you can help drive results um, and, and not just be sort of fluffery, right? And so I think being in the business versus on the business is a philosophical shift people can make to be growth drivers um, versus just, you know, as you said, I forget what terminology you used, but uh, order takers or, or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, it's right. marketing should not be the place to just go get fun, creative in t-shirts and, and uh, things like that. Marketing is a business driver and can be a business driver. Um, but you have to be in the business. You have to understand what's going on and you have to be close to your business stakeholders so that they can see that you're, that you understand, um, that you're a partner, um, and that you can do things to help, you know, whether it's the bottom line or increase customer efficacy or improve satisfaction or whatever the metric might be. If you're in the business, you stand a better chance of doing that. Yes, or more design wins. Or more design wins. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, what's one metric you're going to add to your key performance indicators now that you've been in your new job for all of three weeks? <laughs> right. What, one KPI that will be new that perhaps supports that new philosophy that we're seeing in the marketplace? We are going to add a KPI of expanding the funnel. Um, so um, how can marketing work with our business stakeholders and our sales organization to expand the customer funnel? We've been diversifying as a company now for several years. Um, and again, it reflected in our results that we just announced. So we have the opportunity to expand our funnel and expand our SAM. Um, marketing can help with that. And so one of the KPIs, my team, it's going to be watching and measuring this year is how well did we help expand the funnel? Great. Yeah, there's a good challenge for all of you watching today. You may be brand champions and 
you also need to step into being demand champions. Absolutely. I'm full of all these great pithy words you today, are. aren't I, Don? That's right. That's good. I, it's two cups of cappuccino. I'm telling you, I'm in this. I am in this. Well, That's we've reached right. our bewitching hour. Um, Steph, my producer, has put your LinkedIn profile in the chat um, and on the banner so people can follow you and watch your adventures, not only in marketing innovation, but in Qualcomm's endless innovation as a, a, a 5G pioneer. So, we just want to thank you so much, Don, for being with us today. And I want to send you away so you can go have your mental health day. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. It's been a pleasure. Hopefully everybody listening and watching today got a little something out of it. Um, enjoy your weekend, everybody. Take care of yourselves um, and uh, we'll see you soon.